All right, I felt like, since I'm a big fan of fougere fragrances, you know, aromatic, spicy, fougere, barbershop type fragrances, and we are in winter, it's winter out there, it's cold, rainy, wet, snowy, wherever you are, I felt like it would be a great time to do a video on amber fougeres, meaning barbershop fragrances, fougere fragrances, mixed with warm notes, vanilla, amber, resins, and things like that. So, find out a top 20 amber fougere fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Amber Fougeres. These are warm, spicy fragrances, most likely featuring lavender and tonka beans and the addition of additional herbal notes, aromatic notes, and things like that. But since these are Amber Fougeres, we've got a lot of warm notes, definitely vanilla, sometimes honey. We've got Amber labdanum, some resins, benzoin, things like that, to create a warm barbershoppy fougere experience, which I really love these kind of fragrances. And since I was a kid, I got obsessed with the smell of fougere fragrances because my dad wore them all the time. Uh, they were very, very popular back then. So, you know, they're some of my favorite styles. They definitely lean masculine. And with these particular ones, most of these are targeted a masculine or for men, but uh, they're, you know, laced with warm notes. Anyway, I'll let you know what the list is before I do. If this is your first time tuning in and you still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. I have some announcements to make at the end of the video after the outro, so stay tuned for that. Let's get started with the first fragrance. Going to the house of Lancome. This is Hypnos Om, this one right here. So starting at number 20, this is ranked at number 20. This used to be a little heftier of a fragrance. It's been kind of like destroyed a little bit, but you can still experience the warm fougere barbershop stylings of this particular fragrance. So that's why I've featured it at number 20. So it is chock full of cardamom, amber, lavender, mint, patchouli, musk, bergamot, and mandarin orange. Created by Maurice Roussel. I think he did a great job with this one. And as I said, it's kind of watered down a little bit and also the availability of this one probably is not very wide it's still being sold out there and you can probably find it at the discounters so I thought you know what let's start the list with Lancome's Hypnos Ohm at number 20 so this next fragrance is a soapy one but definitely an amber fougere this is Prada's Amber Pour Ohm, this one right here. I haven't spoken about this one. And I had a tiny bottle early on and I kind of finished that. And I recently was on FragranceNet and I discovered that it was there. Testers were for about 45 bucks for 100 ml. I snatched up two because I have no idea what the status of this particular fragrance will be down the line. So now I have uh, two bottles. But Prada Amber Pour Homme is very ambery. And even though it doesn't traditionally use lavender, it uses other aromatic spicy notes. It creates a kind of a, you know, a amber fougere style fragrance. Features neroli, saffron, myrrh, musk, orange blossom, vanilla, labdanum, leather, tonka beans. So typically tonka beans are featured in fougere fragrances, barbershop fragrances, and of course lavender. But as I said with this one, they're using other aromatic and spicy notes to create the uh, fougere barbershop -y styling. So anyway, Amber Pour Homme by Prada is really, really great fragrance. I really like it. Also, it's very powdery and also it's very, very soapy. So it's a clean fragrance. So that's at number 19. Next, going to the house of Mabusan. This is Mabusan Pour Homme, one fragrance created by Alberto Moriaz. And this is a lavender um, balm. Uh, you know, laced with the warm vanillic notes as well. So basically it's lots of vanilla with the addition of warm vanilla in here. But there's additional notes in here like cinnamon, which adds some spiciness, sandalwood, patchouli, sage, rosemary, bergamot, musk. So it's very, very aromatic. It's very spicy, but you've got the vanilla in here adds the warmth to the fragrance to create an amber fougere style. Mabusan Pour Homme. It's a great scent. If you like lavender, you got to get that one because it's a very, very lavendery. So the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Jacques Bogart. This is Pour Homme. Bogart Pour Homme. A, a really great obsession with this one. It's very, very inexpensive and it smells of tonka beans. So here with this amber fougere, they've amped up the tonka beans against the lavender. So you've got a more of a nutty bitterness here that's really, really beautiful actually. It's really a wonderful smelling fragrance. Um, uh, basically the note in this particular fragrance is the tonka beans. It's the star and you definitely experience its nuttiness. It's light tobacco-ish nuances. It's bitterness and almondiness and things like that. 
add. So it's all captured in here. But I think it's a really, really solid offering and a very, very inexpensive quality fragrance for men. Tonka beans, lavender, orange blossom, bergamot, patchouli, cedar, oak moss. Wonderful fragrance. Try it if you haven't tried it yet. And I think it's definitely a solid offering for a very, very budget price. So that's Jacques Bogart, Bogart Pour Homme at number 17. Uh, at number 16, go into the House of Imaginary Authors. It's Telegramma. This particular one, once again, is a lav lavender balm, and it's also very, very powdery. So you've got kind of like a warm, ambery touch in here. It does have a vanilla. There is an amorous note in here as well, but it's laced with a lot of aromatic, spicy lavender in here. It acts like a talk, uh, like a barbershop-y talk powder kind of an experience, but lots of lavender, talk, vanilla, amorous, linen, teak wood, black pepper. So there's some spiciness in there. There's some woodsy touches, but the star is lavender and of course that talk note uh, and the, the vanilla as well. So imaginary authors telegramma at number 16. So even though some of these are not technically called amber fougeres, I'm putting them in this category because Typically, lavender is uh, featured in a fougere fragrance, and some of these, you know, there's technicalities around them, especially this one. I'm not sure if this is 100% a fougere fragrance, but for me, it feels and acts like it, but more of an amber fougere. Speaking about Caron, pour un homme de Caron, you know, it's, it's just lots of lavender, so it's aromatic, it's spicy, a bit floral, you know, Contrast it with the vanilla, so it's warm, syrupy, and it creates for a powdery experience along with the musk. No tonka beans, but, you know, I think I think it's in there. There might be some uh, tonka beans in there. And tonka beans do also create a, in addition to the nuttiness, in addition to the tobacco -ish nuances, there is a bit of a vanillic quality there as well. So I think it kind of enhances the vanilla. And I'm not 100% saying there is tonka beans, but to me this acts like an amber fougere fragrance. But a really, really great one. This is one that I smelled from my dad. He used to wear this one. And I really have a special place for this one. So it's number 15, Caron, Pour un homme de Caron. It's a great smelling fragrance. This next one's going to the house of Lalique. This is Lalique Pour Homme, the lion. And this particular one, once again, it's a very lavendery experience. Lots of lavender here. It's a lavender balm, but this one has a little more depth. There's a lot more things going on in this particular fragrance compared to some of the other ones. So it's loads of lavender, cedar, iris, rosemary, oak moss, vanilla, amber, patchouli, sandalwood, grapefruit. No mention of tonka beans, but to me, it acts like a, you know, amber fougere, basically warm, vanilla, ambery resin notes contrasted with a very aromatic, um, spicy lavender. So Lalique Pour Homme at number 14. And this one is a very, very popular fragrance at number 13. Came out in 1995, I believe. Created by Francis Kirkjohn. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans. And, uh, you know, it's still around and they've been cranking out flanker after flanker after flanker of this particular fragrance. But the original is still smells pretty good. I think it's seen um, uh, m multiple changes, so it doesn't act as oomphy as it once did. But I think when you smell it you can kind of remember uh, the uh, the fragrance that used to be when it first launched because it was a beast back then very very strong stuff but Le Mal features vanilla tonka beans cinnamon lavender mint orange blossom yeah it's uh, definitely an amber fougere style, but it's a very, very warm, spicy concoction. Lots of vanilla, lots of tonka beans, lots of cinnamon, and then of course, lots of lavender. So Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal is at number 13. So at number 12, going to the house of Amouage, it's Enclave. And here, it's not your typical fougere or barbershop fragrance, but definitely it's an amber fougere experience. And in this particular fragrance, they've replaced the uh, lavender with mint. So that's taking the place of the, uh, the uh, lavender. Traditionally, it's lavender, but you know, it's, a, it's an aromatic herbal note. So uh, they can do that and call, still call this like an amber, amber fougere experience. It is minty, but it's almost like a candied mint. To me, not necessarily like the herb, it's Itself. So if you like the idea of a candied mint, you should check into this one. But it features mint, cardamom, cinnamon, pink pepper, olibanum, patchouli, vetiver, amber extreme, labdanum, leather. Yeah, there's warm notes, there's woody notes, but lots of mint in here. And as I said, the mint in here is that kind of uh, candied mint experience. So Enclave from the House of Amouage is at number 12. So at number 11, going to the House of uh, Parfums of Marley, this is Pegasus. Pegasus, yes, it's an amber fougere. And here we're going 
going to the almond direction. So there's lavender in here and there's also almonds and it's a very almondy take on a fougere and it's a, definitely an amber fougere because it's got the warm notes. It's got vanilla, bitter almonds, sandalwood, heliotrope, lavender, jasmine, and amber. Yeah, this powdery experience, there's lots of powderiness. I believe that's coming from that heliotrope note. Heliotrope adds another layer of almondy touch in the, the fragrance and it creates an almondy experience overall but it's lots of vanilla almonds and then of course lavender to create that amber fougere experience this is pegasus from the house of parfums and marley i'm not talking about the um the other version that came out from that brand i'm specifically uh featuring the original version and then the next fragrance i want to uh, highlight also goes into the nutty direction from the house of uh, histoires de parfums 1725 casanova once again very aromatic spicy and it's a warm ambery fougere experience lots of lavender here i think there's more lavender in this one in comparison to pegasus now they're kind of both kind of nutty uh experiences but for me this one has a, an ample amount of lavender in comparison to the pegasus but this also features lots of vanilla lots of almonds licorice star anise amber sandalwood grapefruit citruses along with the lavender so it kind of acts like a nutty dessert uh, experience Experience, like an Italian pastry because you know they use the star and not star anise but licorice and you know that star anise or anise like uh, uh, touches in some uh, pastries and cookies and things like that so we've got the nuts and the uh, anise kind of qualities with vanilla so there's a kind of a dessert like quality is it really an amber fougere I think it is it's less of a fougere for me more of an amber but you know you still have that lavender in here to create the amber fougere experience so number 10 histoires de parfums 1725 Casanova. At number nine, going to the house of Molinard, it's Lavande. Yeah, it's a technicality once again, but it's very lavendery and it also features tonka beans. And of course, it's got the warm notes in here, and I'm putting this down as an amber fougere because it acts like one for me. Lavender, clary sage, vanilla, benzoin, tonka beans, labdanum, patchouli. So it's very ambery, it's very vanillic, plus you've got the resin benzoin in here. So it's also very, very warm and, and of course, gooey along with lots of lavender you can totally experience the lavender in here it's very lavendery plus the addition of clary sage more aromatic spice thrown in but it's all contrasted with warm notes and then of course you know the tonka beans and patchouli are in here as well it's a great fragrance it also to me smells a little bit like lavender extreme from the house of tom ford Lavande from the house of Molinard is at number nine. I have a comparison video on the channel of that fragrance with Tom Ford's Lavender Extreme. You can go catch that. At number eight, going to the house of Guerlain, it's Heritage. I feel like this to me is a very woody, spicy, but barbershoppy, amber fougere direction kind of a fragrance. That's why I featured it here. And it's very, very classy. A very, very masculine offering from the house of Guerlain. And then to this day, it's smells fantastic at least to me it does i really love it it's got the classic touches but it's not overly classic that you know some of the younger generation would uh, hate this kind of a fragrance either way i think it's a great fragrance featuring sandalwood patchouli lavender amber aldehydes juniper berries it's very aromatic very spicy but you've got the amber in there which creates the warm gooeyness contrasted with the aromatic lavender great fragrance heritage from the house of guerlain uh, I love that one. Now this next one, going back to the house of Amouage, it's Sunshine Man. And here we've got lots of lavender, lots of lavender, and of course tonka beans. This is signature notes for uh, creating a, a fougere fragrance. But in this particular fragrance, there's also an ample amount of immortel notes. So it has a kind of a dry, autumn-like grassiness experience in here, along with that lavender and tonka beans. There's a little bit of a booziness from brandy, so it, it creates the kind of a warmth that it needs to create the amber fougere experience, but you've got lots of uh, vanilla in here, loads of it. Throw in some oranges, juniper berries, clary sage, and bergamot. You've got kind of like a gourmand fougere experience, a little gourmand, not all the way, so I'm calling this a amber fougere, and it smells really, really great. Uh, the, the addition of the mortel note adds kind 
kind of like a very, very autumn-like experience to the fragrance. Anytime Immortelle shows up in fragrances, to me it smells like dry autumn leaves. I don't know if you got, that does, uh, that, that happens to you guys as well. Either way, Sunshine Man from Amouage. It's a great amber fougere fragrance and that's at number seven. This next one's from the house of Cartier. This is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. This one right here. Great, great fragrance from Cartier. They did a wonderful job bringing this fragrance from the early 90s to modern times. Came out two years ago, just before the pandemic started, and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance from a designer. It features sandalwood, liqueur note, balsam fir, tonka beans, benzoin, ambrosonide, patchouli, labdanum, and even though there's no mention of lavender here, I think it's there because the original featured lavender, and to me this does smell like the original with a more modern touch and a boozy touch and a sandalwoody touch. It's such a great fragrance. It might it smell a little old to the younger generation, but it's very, very classy. Get used to it and enjoy this really wonderful fragrance. So Cartier, Pasha de Cartier Parfum at number six. And I'm not forgetting this one. This is from the house of Raja Parfums. This is Danger Pour Homme Parfum. Such a great fragrance. It does remind me of Heritage, but it's different. To me, it's beefier. Also has that sparkly cumin note thrown in. So it does add a kind of a, a sexy, musky sweatiness in the kind of like the heritage experience. But yeah, it's a great, great fragrance from this house featuring lavender, ambergris, woodsy notes, patchouli, cumin, oak moss, vanilla, castorium. Yeah, there's some animalic uh, qualities in here, but it's very, very sexy. It's very classy. Uh, there is the cologne version in the kind of reddish orangish bottle. I, I prefer this one, but I think it, the other one still smells great as well. Anyway, this is Roger Parfum's Danger Pour Homme Parfum at number five. At number four, going to the house of Nilafar Dunil. It's Nilufer. I recently did a video on this house, and this fragrance Oh my God, I absolutely love it. It really is a great fragrance. It's almost like taking this, this is 1725 Casanova, amplifying the nuttiness and also amplifying the lavender. But even though we've got a lot of um, nuttiness, I think the lavender still wins out here. So you've got more lavender and lots of nuttiness and it makes for a wonderful wearing experience. There's lots of warmth in there as well, but it's lots of vanilla, almonds, lavender, hazelnuts, heliotrope, cinnamon, cedar, myrrh, musk, geranium for one beautiful nutty amber fougere fragrance. So good. And it's created by Chris Maurice. So I really highly, highly recommend this one. Plus the price won't break the bank either. It's, it's around 140. 120 to 150 dollars somewhere around there so it's not overly expensive try this fragrance go catch my video i still have a give a giveaway there uh you can participate in before i close that giveaway so this is nilafar du nil nilufer is the name of the fragrance that's at number four all right next up at number three going to the house of zershoff it's naxos yes i'm putting this down in this list yes it's got lavender yes it's got to, uh, tobacco but it also has tonka beans so it's definitely a warm ambery fougere experience for me it is i, I really like that about it but this particular fra fragrance features loads of bergamot with lemons but lots of lots of lavender cinnamon honey tobacco leaf cashmere tonka beans vanilla beans for one warm spicy tobacco honeyed amber fougere experience such a great fragrance one of my favorites i love the way it smells and i love the whole combination of notes that they did a wonderful job with this one naxos has is at number three. At number two, going to the house of Eight and Bob, it's Egypt. Got a brand new bottle because I finished the other one. So this one, man, it's so good. It is such a great amber fougere experience. It's got lots of warm spiciness, lots of vanillic ambery notes, but it features lots of lavender with nutmeg, patchouli, cardamom, sandalwood, leather, oak moss, lemons, and vanilla. What a wonderful fragrance it is. It's very, very classy. It's very masculine. It has the barbershop spiciness and the aromatic, uh, you know, uh, touches, herbal touches, but it's got lots of warmth thrown in. And an ambery experience that I absolutely love and can't get enough of. So at number two, it's Eight and Bob Egypt. All right, I've got a few bonus fragrances for you guys today before I get to the number one. The first one I wanted to mention, it didn't make the list, it didn't make the top 20, but I wanted to highlight it. It's Jevoy L'Art de la Guerre. This is a different kind of a fougere for me, but it is a warm amber fougere because it does have some warm notes but it features leather oak moss rhubarb lavender immortelle nutmeg 
patchouli, violet leaves, and green apple. It doesn't fully go to the warm, warm, warm direction. It doesn't feature a lot of amber or vanilla, but there are some warmish notes in there. That's why I wanted to highlight it. So this is Le Art de la Guerre from the House of Javoy. I do want to highlight this one. This is Dior's Au Noir, this one right here. Anybody know this one? This is created by Francis Kirkjian. Uh, it's definitely that kind of warm, ambery, fougere experience with lots of lavender. And there's also licorice here and coffee. And it does have kind of a maple syrup-like experience. A lot of people have mentioned this, which I kind of can see. It's got Immortel in it once again. And Immortel is very autumn-like smell, as I was saying earlier on. But it features lavender, licorice, coffee, vanilla thyme, Immortel, violet, leather, saffron. It's quite nice. Tough to get, but if you can get it, get your hands on it. It's quite uh, delicious. The next one I wanted to highlight also, didn't make the list, it's Inica's Field of Notes. Field Notes from Paris is what I should say. It's called Field Notes from Paris, and it's from the house of Inica. And this one, to me, uh, it is a kind of that warm fougere-like experience, warm ambery fougere. But it definitely goes white floral on its dry down. As it's settling, it becomes more of a white floral experience, which I kind of like that. But there's lots of tobacco here, tonka beans, there's beeswax, coriander, orange flower, leather, vanilla, patchouli. So it's a different kind of a amber fougere experience. But it's definitely that kind of warm, spicy, ambery experience with the kind of fougere-like barbershop-y touches there. So field notes from Paris, from Inica. And I do want to highlight this one. I mention this all the time and it's one of my favorite fragrances. It didn't make the top 20 because it doesn't fully go there, but it's Dior's Feb Delicious. Yeah, there's, there's lavender in here, in the background. When you can smell it, you can pick up the lavendery aromatic spiciness. But for me, it's more about the tonka beans and the gourmand notes thrown in there. But way in the background, you'll notice uh, some lavender kind of creeping in and trying to pop in and uh, kind of give you that, uh, you know, that uh, amber fougere experience. But as I said, it doesn't fully go there. So if you like the idea, with a little bit of that aromatic uh, spiciness from the lavender, but more about the tonka beans and the gourmand notes, then definitely check out Dior's Fab Delicious. And finally, at number one, we're going to the house of Le Galeon. It's special for gentlemen. How many of you knows this house? This stuff is so damn good. I first sampled it back in uh, 2014. Uh, I bought a... Um, a little sample set of this house, more like a 10 ml samples of seven or eight uh, fragrances from this house. This became such a great fragrance for me that I absolutely love it. I've kind of, uh, you know, forgotten about it. I've circled back to it because I bought a brand new bottle and I can't get enough of this particular smell uh, because it's a really, really great amber fougere experience. Classic, modern at the same time. But this special for gentlemen features notes of lavender, apopanax, oak moss, vanilla, cinnamon, amber, citron, castorium, birch, and labdanum. It's very, very warm. It's spicy. It's got some, you know, it's got some musky sweatiness in there, some light animalic touches. But if you like kind of like a bad boy warm fougere experience, definitely try Special for Gentlemen. I think it's a really, really solid fragrance uh, from this house and one that smells really, really fantastic. It's got lots of sweetness contrasted with uh, the lavender note. Anyway, final fragrance, Special for Gentlemen at number one. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Let me know if you've sampled these fragrances. Uh, let me know if you have a favorite amber fougere or warm spicy fougere fragrance that I did not mention here. Put a comment down so I can find out. This is what I had in my collection and I've been wanting to do this list and I felt like now, January 2022, in the you know middle of winter would be a great time because I love fougeres and most of the time they go fresh spicy, but these are definitely warm spicy. Anyway, let me know if I've missed anything. Put a comment down, as I said, so I can find out. Either way, if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Thanks so much for sticking around guys. Today's the last video I will air uh, until next Saturday. I've taken a whole week off. I've got a lot of planning to do for something that I'm planning on launching and I'll make that announcement within the second or third week in January. So stay tuned for that. But I, I will not be airing any videos for the remainder of next week or the start of next week up until next Saturday. So next Saturday will be uh, when I will start 
airing videos again on the channel. It's just I have to prep for some stuff that I'm working on and I just needed to tune out the videos for a while. Uh, just a lot of prep work for me to do to get it started and then I'll come back and work on it and then I'll make that announcement. So the only thing is there are some fragrances that have just launched that I've been waiting uh, my bottles to arrive. If they do arrive in time and I might, you know, feel like reviewing it, I'll go ahead and review it but I might just hold off until after next Saturday to get those videos out. Either way, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Bye-bye.